The 1990s were an interesting decade. Sports compacts were gaining momentum. The evolution of fuel injection and engine control computers resulted in engines that were both dependable and potent. Companies were wagering wildly on what would attract automobile purchasers. None of these automobiles from this throw everything against the wall and see what sticks era stuck, while others, well, we're glad they're gone. These are some of the 90s cars we forgot about for one reason or another. First on our list is the 1991 through 1993 Nissan NX2000. Consider the NX2000 to be the sportier sister of the renowned Sentra SER. They shared many of the qualities that made them SCCA legends and low to moderate quality collectibles. However, the NX2000's short manufacturing run and odd design caused most import fans to overlook it. Here are the reasons why it should be recalled again. Its 2.0 liter SR20DE engine sent power to the front wheels via a factory limited slip differential. Its brakes were superior to those of the Sentra SER and its small weight made for impressive handling. Super 90s T-tops were a pleasant surprise, but slick top roofs are now lighter and harder to find. The electric car is here. Next on the list is the GM EV1. Electric vehicles may have become a huge commercial success in the 21st century, but their history goes back to the 19th century, when the very first battery-powered car was invented. The first mass-produced modern electric vehicle was the GM EV1, which went on sale in 1996. The EV1 only had a range of 55 miles and a top speed of just 80 miles per hour, and it was scrapped in 2003 after General Motors announced that they had been unable to make the project profitable and ordered all cars to be returned to the company. Instead of introducing it, we decided to launch it. The new Lincoln Mark 8. What a luxury car it should be. Next on our list is the 1993 through 1998 Lincoln Mark 8. Even if you were aware of it, you may have forgotten about the Lincoln Mark 8. Its term was a relic from the dark days of Lincoln when aircraft carrier-sized, uncaringly constructed personal luxury barges transported owners to the disco. Its design was intended to be contemporary, but resembled a modernized version of the status quo, with a trunk hump reminiscent of the Continental kit. The first application of the so-called modular engine family, it was a rear-drive front engine luxury car with a 4.6-liter V8 and was based on the Thunderbird. The basic air suspension is likely to be worn, or worse, if it hasn't been serviced. Therefore, be aware of vehicles that haven't been serviced. We are looking for a man in a new Mercury Cougar. Exactly like this one. He's a dangerous double agent and a master of disguise. Haven't seen him. Next on the list of the 90s cars that should be forgotten is the 1999 Mercury Cougar. In the early 1990s, Ford ambitiously, but maybe foolishly, attempted another world car experiment, creating a mid-sized sedan destined for Europe and America. The Contour was master of no trades, with bottom of its class interior volume given its price. It spawned a sporty coupe, the Mercury Cougar, a successor to the Ford Probe in the company's broader lineup. Back in the day, we liked its handling and braking, as well as its fresh new edge styling. But the discontinuation of the Contour meant that no matter how pleasant the Cougar was, its days were numbered. It only lasted three model years, with manual and V6 variants in the mix. The Mitsubishi Galant has won major awards in both Japan and America. It completed car and driver's 30,000 mile test with a perfect reliability record. Next is the 1991 through 1992 Mitsubishi Galant VR4. In the late 1980s, the Japanese, flush with cash, 
from a massive economic boom, went crazy building technologically superior automobiles that made auto industry heavyweights sweat bullets. Under the hood was a renowned 4G63T engine, which later made its way into the Lancer evolutions sold in this region. Essentially, this is the grandfather of the Evo. It featured 195 horsepower, a significant amount for the mid-size sedan at the time, as well as the company's first performance all-wheel drive system with a vicious center differential. The Japanese economy then collapsed and the VR4 was discontinued. Presenting the new Civic Del Sol from Honda. Next on our list of some of the 1990s cars that should be forgotten is the 1993 through 1997 Honda Civic Del Sol. Successor to the sporty CRX hatchback, the Honda Civic Del Sol is a strange duck. Its most notable feature, the removable Targa panel that stowed in the trunk, didn't make it nearly as performance-oriented as its predecessor, and competitors were more focused. The Mazda MX-5 Miata's top went all the way down, and it was rear-wheel drive and highly entertaining. Quality issues and a lack of a well-defined audience meant the Del Sol never took off, and its relative size compared to Civics with similar power meant the racing tuning crowd never warmed up to it. On the plus side, Del Sols are cheap and fun enough with a 160 horsepower VTEC equipped B16 engine. The Mercury Capri 16 valve convertible. Think of it as a steel bikini. Next on our list is the 1991 through 1994 Mercury Capri. The Australian built Mazda based Mercury Capri never stood a chance. A shoddy, quick, and dirty design to give Mercury something sporty to sell in America. It has awkward proportions and uninspired dynamics. On the other hand, the Capri is a 2 plus 2 with very small rear seats for kiddos or pets, and even a small trunk pass through to allow for extra gear to be stowed inside with the top up. But practicality isn't as strong a sales driver as styling. And while Ghia theoretically penned the Capri, it doesn't look Italian, and it seems especially plain with the top raised. Speaking of, the roof was complicated to put in place, and leaks were reported by many owners. A turbocharged variant couldn't move the needle with just 134 horsepower on tap. And the three-speed automatic available only with the non-turbos is a punishment rather than a convenience. Perhaps the Capri is best forgotten. There's something coming. Transport like you never see. Transport. It's a new kind of driving machine. Get on your party. The space vehicle of the 90s. Transport. Introducing the Pontiac of minivans, the new Pontiac Transport. Next on the list of some of the 90s cars that should have been forgotten, the Pontiac Transport. The 90s was a decade of the minivan, a vehicle type that has been all but completely replaced by much more stylish and robust SUVs in the 21st century. The first minivan may have been launched in 1983, but it was over the next decade that car manufacturers around the world started to embrace these family-friendly models. The Pontiac Transport, a General Motors minivan in production between 1990 and 1999, was nicknamed the Dust Buster because of its unwanted resemblance to the household appliance. You can call it a Geo if you want, but she's a Chevy. Your new ride tells the world I'm fiscally responsible, environmentally conscious, and a little bit dangerous. With three cylinders and a one liter engine under the hood, this bad girl can do zero to 60 in two and a half minutes flat, if she's going downhill. Next on our list of some of the 90s cars that should be forgotten, for one reason or another, is the Geo Metro. Geo Metro was the name given to rebadged Suzuki Colts, which were sold in the States through a partnership between the Japanese company and General Motors. 
The compact car was only ever designed to be a cheap runabout, but so many corners were cut with the Geo Metro that it had a reputation as one of the worst cars of the decade, as well as being made with substandard materials. The Geo Metro was also much smaller than many of the most popular cars on the U.S. market in the 1990s. Introducing the official car of the new Disney MGM Studios theme park in Florida. Oh, oh. Meet the 1990 Lumina from today's Chevrolet. See you real soon. Last on our list of some of the 90s cars that should be forgotten is the Chevrolet Lumina. The Chevrolet Lumina was another cheap and shoddy 90s car, which was first sold in 1989 before being discontinued in the States in 2001. There was even a so-called high-performance model available until 1994, though this was something of a disappointment inside and out. The Lumina name was also used by Chevy for an uninspiring minivan, which was in production between 1990 and 1996, and which didn't look hugely different from the unsightly Pontiac Transport minivan that we talked about earlier. Well, there you have it, some of the 90s cars that should be forgotten. Do you own one? Did you own one? Let us know what you think of some of the 90s cars we should forget about, or maybe not. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that bell for future video notifications. This is Danny B of the Boca Brothers. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.